I think the biggest thing that people should be doing is analyzing their tool, making sure they have all the needs and necessities to make sure that they can do these different things and then mm -hmm. being able to utilize them and spend the time doing it. Welcome to the Marketing Automation Hustle Podcast, where we break down the essential strategies of email marketing and automation to help e-commerce brands hyper-personalize their customer journey and increase sales on autopilot. So get ready to automate your marketing like a pro with Sendlane's brand marketing manager and your host, Caitlin Hutchinson. Hello and welcome back to the Marketing Automation Hustle. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. And today I'm actually going to kick things off by asking you for a favor first. If you're loving our podcast and you're enjoying the content that we're putting out, please, please, please take a moment to subscribe and leave us a review. We'd love to hear from you and get some feedback. So I have again with me today, Senlane co-founder and CEO, Jimmy Kim. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining us for a fourth time. Yeah. Third probably time? fourth. I think this is the fourth time. I think this is your fourth time. Yeah, I'm sure there's many more coming. Thanks for coming back. Um, last time we had you in the studio, I think we were focused a little bit more on how email marketing is still relevant, how you can make it work for your business. But today we're going to specifically focus on email marketing for e and how you can maximize your online store sales using email marketing. Sure. So I'm going to kick it off by asking you why email marketing is such a crucial part of e-commerce marketing specifically. Sure. I think the answer is very simple. I think the biggest thing that as an e-commerce company or brand or store, whatever you're doing, if you're not making, and I think the industry standard is about 20, 20 to 30% of your revenue from your email list mm -hmm. means that you're probably not utilizing your email as successfully. And what that really talks about is not really like the fact that they expect your email list to be generating money if you're, you know, not bringing in leads and subscribers. But what it means is like you should be turning your customers and creating that repeat buying cycle behind those customers. So that, that means that people are buying more products from you. And when people are buying more products, it increases that revenue generation through email. So, you know, we talk about this in a lot about our, in our podcast already about like, just like the customer journey and how to take them, but mm -hmm. also being able to segment those people, take those people down a particular journey or path, personalize, personalizing that experience and so forth. So I know that's what our podcast is about today. And it's kind of drives that uh, side of things. But yeah, that's all driven from what you're doing with your email marketing, more the automation and segmentation and everything else with it. Yes, exactly. So if anybody's listening who has an online store, obviously you know you're getting your contacts from your current customer base, any leads you currently have, but also you wanna be constantly collecting new opt-ins. So I wanted to start there with the actual opt-in. Sure. And we're actually launching intelligent pop-ups at yep. Sendlane, which is a great tool to be collecting opt-ins. You can customize those forms, brand them, put them on your website with just a little snippet of code. It's super easy. So I kind of wanted to talk about best practices sure. for putting forms on your online store, your website, or wherever they're collecting leads. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of ways to collect those forms. I think it really just depends on how and what you want to present your brand as. Uh, I mean, the most simplest way that you'll see in most stores is when you load the site the first time there's a pop-up when you try to exit or do anything and it just tells you hey get a 10 percent off coupon or mm -hmm. get on my email list or whatever that free lead magnet whatever that may be now and traditionally in maybe more of a digital business a lead magnet could be like a book or some kind of course or something that they're giving away mm -hmm. and a lot of the times e-commerce brands will be using a coupon a lot of the times or like a spin the wheel option or or one of those cool little options that you can use for different pop-ups i mean what we created was more of that essential pop-up side mm -hmm. but there's that deeper like creative side of like, you know, I'm sure you guys have all seen it. I mean, it's flooded the market when Carlo uh, built Wheelio. He was the first to come in out with it. And basically that little whole spin the wheel thing where you spin the little yep. fake wheel and then it gives, asks you for your email See address. how much you can get off yeah, of your purchase or whatever. Exactly. And then everyone went off and copied him and like kind of like took it off and like there's like a billion versions of it. But there's all these new creative ones that come up down to like scratch, like to kind of like you kind of rub the screen with a, either a mouse or your finger. There's ones you tap. I mean, there's so many versions of it. But the essential 
essentially the idea behind it is like, how do you engage those visitors from the day they visit your site instead of just waiting for them to make that purchase or abandoned cart, but how do you get them engaged at some level? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, just like any other business in the world, e-commerce requires multiple touches, but e-commerce tends to be a little bit more of impulsive buy. Uh, a lot of times people are looking for that unless they've been served an ad and they're coming over there. But a lot of times people are coming there because they have an intent to buy. And the idea is, hey, if I can capture that email address, however it may be through, you know, a coupon or newsletter or anything, you can take them and nurture them. So I think the biggest thing when it comes to effective opt-in and making sure that it is, is A, making sure that there's an attractive reason why they want to give you an email address. Mm -hmm. Subscribe to my newsletter is not an attractive yeah. thing. I mean, not an e-commerce 10% company. off, 15% yeah, off. Yeah, exactly. If you're, on, if you're on a blog or something and you've got a great blog on your e-commerce and I can see like someone subscribing to your blog for the newsletter for there. But when you're coming to a store, a lot of times nobody really wants to opt into your newsletter. Yeah. They want a reason to they opt in. They want something for them. Correct. And then just making sure that you're communicating that and, you know, obviously knowing that that's the buyer intent journey, that person is not subscribing for a 10% off coupon because they don't want to buy. They're taking that 10% off coupon because it may help their buying decision, mm -hmm. right? So the idea behind it is you're taking that lead and you're trying to nurture it into a sale and that's the only goal that you have. So making sure that that follow-up is there and setting it up. So having that and then there's also best practices around making sure your device, mobile or, or desktop device, and then also using different things like on different pages maybe you'll have a different bar it doesn't always have to be a pop-up it can be on the page it could be a banner ad mm -hmm. it could be a lot of different things but that message believe it or not a lot of times those things are supposed to be disruptive and mean that they're standing out so that people stop will stop you in your tracks yeah exactly kind of to get you get your eyes on it and then from there it's you know up to the marketer of what they're going to do behind that right yeah uh, but at the end of the day it just very relevant like get the more email addresses and you'll have a bigger list and then that list obviously there's hygiene and everything that comes with it but making sure that you can take that list and nurture those people is the goal here right so yeah and i mean even for myself we've talked about online shopping and all yeah. that but i i know i'm on so many lists just from grabbing discount yeah. codes just because even if i'm on a website and i'm not a hundred percent ready to buy i don't want to miss out on getting the discount yep. so they're already getting my email and then they can continue to market me with that email send me targeted emails with the products i'm looking at yep. etc which we'll get into next yeah, yeah. Actually. And, and i think it's really interesting the world is changing because everything's going from retail to e-commerce now and like yeah. being online and traditionally, i hate shopping in stores yeah but stuff. traditionally in the store you walk in and they've got like banners all over the place and then you walk into the store and then they'll have signs all over the thing so your job is to figure out how to do that without the retail location right without the physical person walking around your store you need to think about that same journey if you're on an e-commerce store because they're doing the same thing when they browse from page to page from product to product to Search mm -hmm. product. They're no do, they're doing anything different than what a window shopper or somebody who walks into your store does and wanders around your just store. Just picking and walks up and around. looking at things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's the same idea and mentality. So it's really important to make sure you're in front of them. And if you can capture that lead in front of them early, then you know how to nurture them. And I know we're going to talk about this in a second, but like how to nurture them and how to be able to retarget them as well, too. Exactly. Which leads me actually into the next thing I wanted to touch on, which is email retargeting. Sure. So we all know, we all get ads as far as like, you know, on Google or on Facebook, we're all familiar with retargeting ads, but specifically because we're talking about email marketing, we're talking about email retargeting and how that can be effective in converting your online visitors who might've gotten away from you and never completed their purchase. Um, you can target them with product recommendations. So let's dive into that sure. a little bit. Um, and first, I kind of wanted to point out a, a stat that three out of four shoppers actually leave without completing yeah. a purchase. So that's a lot of people that yeah. are getting away from you. But 70% of those people are more likely to make a purchase when they're brought back to your site sure. through retargeting. Yep. So that's kind of what I want to dive into. And that's something you can do with Sunline. Yeah, absolutely. So I think there's two elements of retargeting. I don't think it's just about email retargeting that helps. But you know, when you're setting up a true retargeting campaign, right? Like the hardest thing to get a person to do is to come to your website, right? Mm -hmm. To get that person to the website. When they're at your website, they should be considered tremendously more valuable because they're considered a warm lead, right? And you want to drive them back to your, uh, to your site. And that's what retargeting is, right? And if you're running your ad platforms, you're running all the different places, that's great. But where we think about email retargeting and I think email retargeting does become relevant and you have to turn and look at larger companies before you even look at an e-commerce store itself so let's take eBay for example eBay is a perfect example large mm -hmm. e-commerce they sell all sorts of products you know obviously their user 
longer uh, sold, but they're still bringing a lot of products and they're bringing you back in constantly through the store. What happens? So let's take a typical user journey, right? Someone jumps on eBay. They look at like six products. They look at this water cup that I'm holding right now in my hand. They really like the water cup, but they don't buy. Mm -hmm. And then maybe four hours later, just like an abandoned car, an email flies into your inbox and it's like, hey, by the way, that product you looked at, here's similar or here's a discount or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. That's email retargeting. But what you just said about the stats, three out of four people don't make that purchase on that first visit and it takes about 70% of the people who are more likely to purchase when they come back, right? Mm -hmm. Taking all those stats into effect when you're thinking about it, the more people you can bring to your site, the more times you can get yourself in front of that customer is going to make it more relevant. So now let's flip that to email. How does that work in email, right? So first of all, you've got to have a cross-channel tool, right? It's got to be tracking your website visitors yep. and what you're being, what you're able to do. And it doesn't work. And there's programs out there that do it for like cold emails, ones that aren't typically on your lead list or your customer list. There's two ways to look at that. That's that's one technology that does exist out there, but I don't think it's been perfected yet. It's still trying to match a lot of things. Uh -huh. The second thing that happens is when you have a tool like Sendlane or any tool that provides uh, provides that site tracking element when you're doing your cross channel, you'd be able to track down to exactly what sites they visited and then be able to t send a very targeted email back to them, right? And a lot of times the best practice is one time visits on a site is not going to generally do it. You mm -hmm. should be looking at like the journey of what they looked at. And, and again, what the you path need is. to have their email in order correct, to do correct. this. You Just need, to clarify in yes. case you're listening and you're like, okay, cool. How do I get these people who are visiting? How do I get their emails yeah. to even send them an email? You have to have already collected it correct. through that opt in that we just talked about yep. somewhere on your website or their past customer, customer yep. or whatnot. Correct. And what's happening is we're matching a fingerprint of data points from like IP addresses to device information, all that information that you're grabbing that happens through that little JavaScript that they won't even know is happening. It allows you to be able to identify who that customer is and see where they are in that journey mm -hmm. and then be able to retarget and remarket those people. So if they're coming back to your site, their lead or newsletter, and they're looking through your newsletter or customer, and they're coming through your site and kind of visiting a lot of things, obviously that buyer intent is very high right now because you don't come back to a site unless you have intention to buy something or you're looking yeah. for that more research. So just like a large company like eBay, now in this world today, it can empower any e-commerce brand, regardless how small you are. Maybe you have a thousand customers, you have 10,000 customers, whatever that looks like for you guys. Anything you can do to make sure that you're recapturing those current customers that are looking to rebuy or those current lead newsletter, like people like you mm -hmm. that are thinking about making that purchase but haven't made that purchase. Anything you can do to get them over the edge, right? So email retargeting comes into play to try to coerce them to kind of come in. And then what does that look like, right? And I know that's probably the follow-up question you're probably asking. It sure is, yeah, Jimmy. Well, How did well, you know? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's what I would assume the next question would be logically. So, and the listeners and the viewers on the YouTube or on podcasts, you know, whatever they are doing, I'm sure that's what they're thinking about as well. So how do you bring it back? Well, there's a lot of ways to bring it back. And I think it really depends on how your brand is positioned. Mm -hmm. There's no perfect answer behind this. I mean, we're this. most familiar, well, most people are most familiar with with, you know, abandoned cart email. Yeah, exactly. So an abandoned cart email, and uh, I talk about this, it, it, it really depends on setting up that cadence correctly and making sure you're doing it. And it shouldn't be just a product sale. There's buyer intent now, right? You should be looking at how that normal customer journey is just looking at a warmer lead. If you're looking at a funnel from top to bottom, where bottom of the funnel is the conversion or the point, they're really deep on the bottom of your funnel now. They're a lead or an opt-in. They're a customer of yours. They visit your site, and they probably visit multiple ones of your site. So obviously the number one and easiest thing that most e-commerce companies are going to do is coupons, right? Mm -hmm. Give a coupon for that product. Maybe they make that purchase. Another thing that people might do is some type of recommendation engine where they will recommend products that are similar to it. Uh, what I've seen that has really worked well for even myself and stuff that I think is a really good best practice is not just layering on those things, but also thinking about like sending them instructions, sending them the use case, so sending them what the problem that that product solves. So if this is cup, it really keeps my water really cold, right? I'm holding it for those listening on the podcast. I'm holding this, I don't know, black mug that I always get around. <laughs> got like five of these at home and I use these all the time because I'm trying to be less wasteful about throwing away cups and it's made out of a metal thing in the middle. So I like to drink cold uh, sparkling water uh, and I like to have it cold, right? And that's the benefit, right? It keeps my drinks cold, Keeping it cold. reusable, yep. save the environment. So like talking about the points and the solution instead of talking about the product. Just that yeah. product itself. Yeah, talking about the product itself and really being 
to drive down that target. Why um, should they purchase correct. it? And so, and then maybe even the brand and the story. I mean, all these little things that come into play, though they may seem minor and minute a lot of the times, it's just like co content marketing or social media marketing where it's really hard to drive that ROI back and being able to attribute it. But with email, you can attribute it, which is, makes it a little bit different and beautiful. And that's why retargeting on emails. And not to mention a lot of the times, it's pretty much already included in your cost that you're already paying monthly to the service provider you may be paying for the sends on the email but they're yeah. so minor and small it's not a big deal it's one of those set and forget kind of things where you're setting up your retargeting so that when people are visiting certain sites on your store especially the hot products you have you know you want to move that inventory or it can go the other way right if you think about the retail world what do they do when products don't sell they put them on end cap they put a big sales sign they put them in the front and store mm -hmm. you can do the same thing if you know you have a product that doesn't sell but you need to get it out of your inventory you could also get really aggressive with it as well too when a person is intent to look at a product and let's just say they look at this cup and you've got 10,000 cups in your warehouse and you don't know what to do with it mm -hmm. you can go off and be like you know what I'm just going to blow these out 30, 50, 75% off. If a person comes and they don't make a purchase, go crazy with it. You know, there's yeah. a lot of strategy behind it. So there isn't a perfect best practice of what you're supposed to do, but to do it is the best practice. Yeah. Is make sure you're Try. tracking the site and using it. And then also the bigger thing with retargeting is it drives into segmentation as well too and being able to drive, like being able to kind of figure out who those people are. Which is exactly comment. where I'm headed yeah. next. Jimmy, let's just keep going. <laughs> yeah, let's just keep going. And that's, that's what it comes down to is like being able to take Take those people and, you know, let's just say you bring out like I have this black cup and you love this black cup and now you come out with a white version and you're like, OK, well, maybe people who bought the black cup would be interested in the white version or maybe people who visit the black cup mm -hmm. and said, I looked at the black cup, but I really wish it was white and I didn't make a purchase regardless of what coupons yeah. and discounts come out. Being able to segment down and being like this product is very similar. Let's test our small. I mean, you could look at it as a test or a customer segment and be like, let's test people who visited this black cup who did not purchase the black cup who are interested in possibly the white cup, right? Yep. And that's what you can really do with segmentation is like you're driving an audience group of data points based around what they did on your site and what they've done that didn't make a purchase to the thing, you can offer that as an alternative product, right? There's one way to segment. The second way to segment is I just talked about it. Second about let's if I'm having a blowout on this product, I should be able to create quickly create that segment right yeah. where retargeting is much more these people bought the black cup and so i'm going to market them yeah, with the white cup or these people uh, looked at the black cup right and didn't buy it right it mm -hmm. really just depends but figuring that out and then being able to correlate your email marketing especially or your sms or whatever you're doing for communication and being able to channel that correct message to say hey like be very upfront i think what people do respect in the world is like when you're straight up like hey you've you you made a purchase of this black cup. Yeah. Let me show you the white cup. Or being very direct works these days. Yeah. Or you can say, hey, you looked at the black cup. And we, we all know that it works. Because yeah. every single person in this building, I'm sure, has purchased something off of retargeting. Yeah. And it's very email. direct. It's not. It, you're warm in 10 by. You're at the bottom of the funnel. You're not at the top of the funnel. That means that person is very warm. And they've, they're just seconds yeah. away from pulling out a credit card. Or they've even pulled out their credit card and then... I don't know, their dog barked and said they need to go outside and they walked away, right? Uh -huh. So like being able to bring him back is really important because most people do get very distracted. I know myself, I sit with a ton of browsers up and I'll be loading stuff and I'll be like- You have like a hundred browsers I, I, up. I mean, it's just how my mind works, all right? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, and I'll have that browser up, I'll look at a product and then I'll walk away and look at something else. I'll completely forget about yeah. it, not on purpose. Do you need that reminder? Yeah, I need that reminder and people need that habitually just like a text message to remind yourself there's why calendars exist. It's the same thing, and it, I don't think it's considered intrusive. I think it's transactional. I actually, I personally like the emails yeah. that are recommending things that I like because they take the time to know what to send me. And I, now I kind of actually, maybe because it's I'm so aware and I work at Sendlane and yeah. I'm very aware of email marketing. But now I find myself actually getting kind of pissed off when they're recommending products that I'm like, no I sense. would never buy that. Like based off what I purchased, why are you recommending yeah. this to me? Like it's kind of annoying. Yeah. But if you send me, you know, the perfect stools to yeah. match the table that I bought, then I'm going to be like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's what it comes down to is like hyper personalization. All these things that we continue to talk about, retargeting, segment all that stuff is just a form of personalization you know yeah. I've talked about it before personalization is no longer just about hey Caitlin or hey hey blah 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 thanks for living in San Diego it's really about personalizing the behavior and the journey that's true personalization now deeper than just a name I mean that's such an archaic like simple thing to do now yeah. but really being able to really correlate like how and where their customer journey is based around 
based around their actual like visits on your website and what they've done on your websites all the way down to that abandoned cart or to the purchase Mm -hmm. and being able to correlate that journey right and that all comes with being able to segment those people real time and being able to drive that and we're not going to dive specifically into you know all the different ways that you can segment your audience but i did want to take a second to tell you guys who are listening or watching or wherever you're seeing our podcast or hearing it um we're launching our youtube a new youtube channel next week And one of our first videos is actually going to be on a few different ways that you can segment specifically for e-com. Yep. So we, we kind of get a little more deep dive into it. So if you're interested in that, I recommend heading over to the Sendlane YouTube channel. It's not up yet, but it'll be launching the first week of September coming up next week. So definitely use that as a resource because if we get into everything, this podcast will be like five hours long. Yeah, absolutely. We can talk about it forever. Yeah. So, um, and then also we have our new book, our 25 holiday tips for e-commerce for email marketing. So definitely check that out. You can download that at sendlane.net slash 25 tips. It's kind of a book we've put together specifically for holidays, Black Fridays, to prepare you as an e-commerce marketer on, you know, best practices, the kind of emails you should be sending to make sure that you're maximizing your holiday ROI. So just wanted to throw those out since we're, you know, on topic with that. Um, And yeah, I think that pretty much wraps most of it up. What I do want to ask you, Jimmy, out of everything we've talked about, what is the most essential pro tip that you think e-commerce marketers should take away from this podcast I from th- what we've talked about i think p- what we've seen regardless of brands that we've taken in that may be tiny and doing a couple hundred thousand dollars a year or companies that are doing 20 30 50 million dollars a year is most people aren't spending the time to put the work in early and mm-hmm. set it up so that you can earn the reap the benefits early because there isn't that instant gratification that comes with this i think the biggest thing that people should be doing is analyzing their tool making sure they have all the needs and necessities to make sure that they can do these different things and Mm -hmm. then being able to utilize them and spend the time doing it and getting it out there. Even if it's as simple as like, I'm going to take my top three hot products instead of just retargeting on those three and then also doing it with segmentation and testing and using that segmentation. So I think the two things that really come in, I think it drives back is like set up some retargeting, see what it works for you and then furthermore, use segmentation more and more in your thing. You should not be, if you're sending just email blast to your entire list all the time Mm -hmm. you've got a serious problem with your marketing and you're not going to survive as you go into 2020 2021 you've got to be segmenting that audience base around at least no i mean nobody has a product that's just general for everybody every time unless you sell a single product maybe yeah but most of the time even if you're like you know a coffee brand you probably sell tea Tea, buy, tea drinkers aren't coffee drinkers and coffee drinkers aren't tea drinkers, but why are you sending them both, right? Yeah. Or like, you know, just even this cup, right? Like maybe the cup is a signification of like, you know, like I like water and or whatever the drink is and keeping it cold. Why would you send me the hot thing when I'm yeah. really focused like cold on, drinks. Yeah, when yeah. I like cold drinks, right? So there is segmentation available and I think that it's really important. And then the sec- second part to that and just to re- talk about it is like you should also be using segmentation to test your products and your marketing behind that product. Don't just blanket things that you can put put a product out there and just see what happens. Mm-hmm. You need to put that product out there and test using segmentation, using your own email list, and see and make sure you drive that for sale. I know when you bring out a new product, regardless of what space of e-commerce or you know, you're selling digital products so services, you just want that first sale. And it's much easier to make that first sale to get you over that first hump to feel like, hey, someone wants my product with your own email list and segmenting them instead of sending it out full blast. So if yeah. you send a 50,000 blast out to your entire list and you make three sales, you probably could have fulfilled effectively done that with sending 5,000 emails and still getting the same three sales. The difference is you wouldn't have bothered 45,000 people who didn't give a crap about what you're actually selling yeah. there. So that's my tip. I think that's a long winded tip around what we just talked about, but it's really something. And, you know, I have all these types of things in upcoming course, Ecom email Academy that's coming out. That's going to be a course really about taking a, anyone from a beginner to an, a, yeah. to an intermediate, to an advanced marketer. Like these are the things that we talk about because it's really important because I, I think the, e-commerce space is so immature right now it's so early right now and though there's a lot of marketers out there the thing is marketing doesn't mean that you should know everything you always should be constantly educating and updating yourself with what's going on in this world today because if you know email marketing from 10 years ago and you think you're an expert you're not an expert anymore because it's changed and evolved 10 years ago i could have put any any joe schmo in that seat and said just blast this email list out to a hundred thousand people make some money and it would have absolutely made money but now people are starting to struggle with that and starting to see a difference 
difference in that. And mm-hmm. it's really important to think about that. That's what Ecom Email Academy is not to plug it right now, but that's coming out in a couple well, of weeks. Well, I was going to say, I mean, we've covered a lot. So I'm sure there is somebody listening who is feeling a little overwhelmed by yeah. all the Im- amount of information that we've shared and kind of the how behind yeah. setting all this up. So I think it's actually great to mention Ecom Academy coming out because if you are that person, that's definitely something you want to sign up for and you're going to get really deep, deep dive into everything you need to know about Ecom email marketing. Obviously, based on this podcast, if you're still listening, you know that Jimmy's an expert. Yeah. He knows what he's talking about. So if you are that person, you want to sign up for this course. It'll be so beneficial. Yeah, absolutely. And it doesn't matter if you're working at a job, you're, you're an entrepreneur. It doesn't really matter. The idea is you want to be a better, well-rounded marketer. And the idea is like, let's take you through the journey. Even in the most beginner setup stuff, as I was going through the course and I was shooting it and like recording, getting things ready for it and like recording, uh, what I found that was really interesting is even though we talk about the beginner stuff and I think it's beginner, I I quickly realized that what I think is really simple and beginner is not really simple and beginner for a lot of people because Mm -mm. I'll talk to these marketers who are at a 40, $50 million company and you'll start talking to them about really deeply thinking that they should be at your same level and you quickly lose them a lot of times, just like segmentation. I can can take someone and spin their heads on segmentation and it's all done because I think what's easy in my head is not always easy in their head and I think that's where it comes out to like making sure that I can at least provide that one golden nugget that even if you're an advanced marketer that you can take away from my course or it's a refresher or it's an onboarding, it can be a lot of things. So I think that's a really really cool way to think about it but yeah i mean i I plan to talk about it more and more as like we get closer to releasing it we just we've been a little like a rough i think i think well i know we're working on this podcast coming out this podcast is coming out this week okay so this thursday so we're about two weeks i think two three weeks out from coming out with it i think towards the end of september yeah mid i think middle september is a good goal for us right now i think we i i got really like a high level was much easier and then i really got granular and then i got really overly granular and Mm -hmm. i think it's good because to me, and the big thing about it is it's our own internal company onboarding training manual as well, too, for yeah. domain education. It's great for and our own employees. Yeah, and that's where it initially stemmed from before it even became a course that I could put out to the market. And I'm, I'm realizing how powerful that is. And then I started getting so granular and I started ma- making these modules and they got so super long that it, we all got delayed behind it, which is fine because I'd rather put it into a place where I come out really It's confident. really valuable. Yeah, I want people to feel like there's value behind it. I don't want few people to feel like, oh, I could have gotten this free for you to me for 10 bucks i want people to or five or 10 bucks from you to me but i want them to feel like oh crap i would have never gotten something like this from yeah you to me, right? i've learned from it i'm going through reading everything that yeah. you've written so i mean i can yeah. speak firsthand that it's super valuable valuable information yeah so i'm sure we'll plug it here in the next future podcast future yes YouTube we stuff will eventually. we'll let you guys know when yeah, it launches when it, when it launches officially we'll get it out there maybe yeah. we'll throw a coupon code out there for the listeners yes, as a for special our way marketing automation hustle listeners or our youtube viewers as well or too. youtube yeah, don't forget the youtube people or the wherever else they're listening to this in the world spotify apple oh, everywhere. all the places or you're watching a video i don't know where it is but anyways uh we'll definitely talk about it more but just to talk about it not to hype it up but that's something that topics that we talk about and we recognize how important it is to go out there and educate people. So for sure. that's all. I, it was a long winded ending for me, but that's yeah. okay. That's okay. <laughs> um, thank you for coming back on here. I know we're going to have you back again at I'm some sure. point. I like to pull Jimmy in on things. I know that he really likes to talk about, as you can tell, <laughs> this was one of them. So you'll never hear him on a podcast where he doesn't have a lot of valuable information to share. So thank you so much, Jimmy, again. And if you love this episode, head over to iTunes and please subscribe, leave us a review. And I'd also love to personally hear from you if you have any feedback or questions for myself or for Jimmy or maybe a certain topic you'd like us to discuss here on the podcast, please shoot me an email directly at caitlin at sendlane.com. We'd love to get your feedback. And of course, if you want to jump into a Sendlane account to test drive some of the features that we've been talking about, event tracking, segmentation, retargeting, all the things we've been chatting about today on the podcast, take advantage of Sendlane's no credit card required 14-day free trial at sendlane.net slash hustle. So thank you for listening and we'll catch you next time on the Marketing Automation Hustle.